When was the last time you made it to the drive-in? You know, the drive-in theater, do they even exist? Yes, they do. I want you to meet the owner of one. I'm so glad to have you. Susan Kochevar, glad to have you here. Thanks, John. Now, you own the 88 Theater, which is on, surprisingly, 88th. Yes. Now, this is the last actual drive-in movie theater open in, in, in Denver, in the Denver area, right? Last one in the metro area. There's a few outlying, but we're the last one in the metro area. Wow, what? I remember high school, going to the drive-in. It was a kick. It was a real piece of Americana. Um, why in the world do you, do you want to be an owner of a drive-in theater? I I mean, do, you, do you understand? I can watch movies from Netflix. Yep. I can get DVDs. I got Blu-rays. I got screens. I can go anywhere. I got 28 multiplexes. What's magic about that? I have a giant 70 by 40 foot screen. And you can sit outside with your family and watch currently three movies. So you can sit there for six or eight hours outside under One the stars price? watching movies. Yes, eight dollars per person. Children under twelve are free. And and you you watch it outside. Do people actually like tailgate and hang out all night and 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 watch the theater? They do. They come early. They purchase a a ball or a toy in my snack bar. They play. They eat snacks from my snack bar, funnel cakes or popcorn, relax. This, is, this has always been a traditionally really American phenomenon mm -hmm. going to a drive-in. I mean, whether it's American graffiti or whatever. You inherited this, if you will. You grew up in the same drive-in. Right. My father bought the drive-in and there's a house on the property, so I actually grew up inside the theater. <laughs> really? <laughs> Boyfriends would have to pick me up inside the theater. It was to, to take you to the drive-in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, let's get let's get down to the real stuff, though. We like drive-ins in high school because you could take a girl there and make out. None of that happens anymore, though, right? Oh, I'm sure not. No, no. Even though the rumors you were actually conceived at the very same theater you work in now. Uh, I haven't heard that rumor, but <laughs> you just ask your mom. You just ask your mom. That's a and you and I have been through this before. One of the great American traditions is hiding college and high school kids in your trunk going into the movie theater. It's true. It gives my staff something to do, and uh, we, we hunt people out, and then they have to go buy a ticket, and we thank them for playing. The reason I wanted to talk to you about this is, is not only is it just such a great experience, and you know, kids today who are always watching everything on the TV screen, the idea of sitting out under the stars, watching a movie is, is such a, a foreign thing. How, how is business? I mean, excellent. I, you say excellent, but there are no more movie theaters like yours around. How can it be excellent if, wouldn't they be spreading instead of closing? Well, you know, you're always fighting off one regulatory body after another. At one time, 1957, there were over 5,000 drive-ins, but most of them closed originally because the land value uh, rose so high because the cities grew up around them. So now there are less than 400 of us. Boulder would be an example of that. I think mm -hmm. it was a holiday drive-in. Yes. I remember that from my college days, and, and now it's now it's houses. They kept the marquee, which is kind of fun. They did. But yeah, so the housing prices go up or the property goes up. But still, you'd think that then new ones would pop up on the outskirts of town anyway. There are a few new builds. I, I have a friend who built one in Montana, for example. He's an ex carnival fella and he, he put up carnival rides. And so there are a few new builds, but not too many. Your, 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 your friends are carnies? Yes. Yeah, that that, Some that of says them. a lot. <laughs> All right, I want to talk about the 88 Theater. Um, uh, here it is in Commerce City. Now, Commerce City is not known, I, not to offend, as a destination spot for arts, entertainment, or cultural activities. But there is this one wonderful throwback experience at the 88 Theater that's, that's, that's yours. I want to talk to you about what's it like running the theater? What's the challenge? because I would think this would be a very easy thing to do. You put on the films, you take the tickets, you, you tell the kids to get out of the trunk of the car, and, and, and you get most of the year off when, it, when it's bad weather. What's the biggest challenge for you? A lot of the challenges now are fighting off one regulatory body after another. Uh, and we're starting to do really, really well. Business is growing and we're starting to back up traffic. So. The newest issue I'm facing is no left turn signs have been put along uh, Rosemary for all the customers trying to get into my drive-in coming from one particular direction. That uh, could easily collapse me if my customers can't get into the theater. 
But I mean, I can understand the give and take that this is a local issue. We got to worry about traffic. We got to do this. You know, that seems like a pretty reasonable uh, response from the from the city. Kind of go through when, when you took over to to now. What are what are the hurdles you have to deal with? I mean, what what are the things that make you say? This has been great, Mom and Dad. I know you put your heart, and sweat, and tears into this, but I, you know, I'm going to go get a job working working for AT and T and not have to deal with this stuff. Um, is it always the city, or is it other regulatory agencies? Other regulatory agencies as well. You know, we're, of course, uh, minimum wage issues. Um, Why is that an issue? Well, because my jobs are entry-level, skill-building sort of positions. And uh, the more I have to pay my employees, the more I have to charge my customers. And uh, so setting an arbitrary line for a minimum wage is a very tough thing for How many, how many people do you employ? About 15. Really? If minimum wage goes up to 10 10 an hour, does that Im impact you? It does. I have, so? to, I have to raise my prices <clears throat> in order to meet my payroll. In, and recently we've gone through a lot of rain, which means I have to have reserves to meet my payroll, and it makes it tougher. It just sets that barrier harder. So you can't, it's going to cost me, what does it cost to, to, to go to a movie? You said eight bucks? For us, it's eight dollars per person, children under 12 are free. Yeah. And you, you get how many movies? Currently three. You can watch three movies in a row if you can actually stay up that late. Three first-run movies, yes. That's pretty impressive. All right, let's let's assume we battle back minimum wage, and so the that would you cut would you cut pay or I'm sorry would you cut hours? Would you be able to do it with fewer people? Would that be a way of saving it? Uh, cutting hours is one option. We're we're pretty busy right now, so I'd probably most likely have to raise prices at this point because of course minimum wage isn't the only issue I face. We're facing um, utility costs which are Talk growing. Talk to me about that. Uh, every I mean, time it's a light bulb. I hate to tell you it's a light bulb. It's a per one projector. How, 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 how much could it be? Uh, $900 a month. <laughs> $900 a month? <laughs> yes. Projecting all of that and, and running all the equipment in the building and everything is very expensive now. So now with the renewable mandates, you're finding the costs are going up. Yes. At one point, we used to run the drive-in year-round, but because utility rates went up, we stopped doing that. We just couldn't run in the winter. We had little in-car heaters we would give to people. Oh, I remember those. So it was the electricity bills that took away our, our year-round drive-in? It was. Yes. So that's why my love life suffered in high school. All right. There you go. Let, let's go to, to the other stuff. Let's go to the municipal things. Uh, here you are. You are a destination for Commerce City, one of the few destination spots. Not that the refinery isn't a great place to bring a date, but this is a destination spot and kind of a, a throwback to a, to a different time. Um, I would think the city wants revenues. You, you pay, mm -hmm. what, what taxes do you pay? Oh, we'll pay sales tax, property tax, a um, whole slew of them. Is there a tax on the tickets? Not currently. Not currently. All right, so you don't have to pay that. So you pay property, you pay sales, they, they get money. Uh, does the city help you bring in more people? I mean, do they help you with the business or do they hinder? Uh, no, they, I can't say they've helped. Um, I think they're probably supportive or at least like having the destination spot, but the... Uh, no left turn signs really hurt. That's probably not the best way to resolve that issue. I'd like to try to expand and do some other things. We've been in discussions uh, with the city. I met with them last fall about some better solutions. But um, in order to accomplish those solutions, I have to have income. Uh, so uh, not allowing customers to get to me will significantly damage that. We just had some big rains the last few weeks, and we had some really big rains the end of last summer. We did. Does that impact you? Terribly, yes. It tears up my ground. And it also, we were closed nine days last September, which I think broke up our minimum, so we didn't do quite as well in the fall. People forgot that we were open. And then, of course, I've been filling essentially half of the theater because the other half is full of full. water. <laughs> I mean, you could bring your dinghy in and tie it up and watch the show. It's All right, so be, be, beyond just the bureaucratic things, there's still a fair amount of regular business risks mm -hmm. that you don't have much control over. No. Whether it's the rain, whether it's the water, whether it's the no turn sign, uh, the minimum wage, all these things 
add up to the many little things you have to do. It's kind of like death by a thousand cuts with all the different regulatory issues like that what? I have. Well, I've also had an issue with the health department. Last year they decided, pardon me, it was two years ago, they decided they were going to take all the grandfather claws out of everything and I'd have to put in a new sink. Keep in mind I just do a dish drain full of dishes and nothing that I serve goes to the customer and back to be washed. It's all disposable. So they wanted me to put in a new sink. Well, it turns out in their very own regulations they had a waiver for us. But for me to put in a new sink, it would have cost me $10,000 by the time I ripped out my old sink, ripped out the hand sink, got permission and approval for the new one, went through all the plumbing and put that in. I don't have $10,000 to spend on that. I have to put in $80,000 plus for digital cinema equipment. So I had to, my attorney, David K. Williams, helped me to look at the regulations and I had to get a state legislator involved to, uh, talk to them and finally issue me a letter which they did not want to do. They want just to give it to me uh, via voicemail. So they, they wanted you to put in a $10,000 sink. Yes, everything now, you costs don't serve, money. you don't serve these dishes to the, to the customers. This is, no. this is just a sink. A sink. Just a sink you use. Yes. $10,000. $10,000. By the time I got the sink that they approved and installation and when you say that these regulations are, are like a death by a thousand cuts, I don't think you're very different than most mm -hmm. uh, small businessmen, that these things just keep popping up and popping up. If, if, you, could, if you could budget out your, your work week, how much of your time do you think goes to either filling out the forms or dealing with the issues? How much time, I guess I'll ask it this way, how much time is being taken away from you focusing on making the 88 theater a success and instead just dealing with making sure you're in compliance? Uh, at this point it's probably about uh, 80 percent. I think just like you said most business people are 80 percent of my time collecting the data that has to be reported and making sure all the forms are. Let me see if I'm, I'm hearing you. Are you telling me that 80 percent of you, a, a small business uh, person who's, who's trying to make a go of this, 80% of the time that you could be spending on the business, you're spending working on governmental issues. Yes, trying to trying my best to follow what's going on, doing all the data collection, all the reports. It takes a tremendous amount of time. That's why most businesses, the business owner is there well beyond all the time all the employees leave. Remarkable. If you had that 80% back, how would your business be? It would be a lot of fun. I could put together some more fun stuff for my customers. People want to go see a movie there. Where, what do they need to know? Where do they go? 88drivein.com or like us on Facebook. 88theater.com? 88 88drivein.com. 88 88drivein. 88 and when you're doing that, check out independenceinstitute.org. Susan, thank you so much. I'm going to check it out soon. Hope you do too.